Hi, this is Don McAllister, and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online for Mac. I've had many requests asking for an update on the Premier outlining application for the Mac, Omni Outliner. Now, Omni Outliner 4 is a major new release, and as I haven't upgraded as of yet, I've asked Tim Stringer to take us through the new features of Omni Outliner for the Mac. Now, even though I've covered Omni Outliner before, I asked Tim to start from scratch. Now, Tim is also at the helm of this week's iOS show, bringing us up to speed on Omni Outliner for iPad. So, over to Tim. Hi, everyone. Welcome to part one of our two part look at Omni Outliner 4 for Mac. In part one, I'll walk you through the basics of creating and styling an outline. And in part two, we'll delve into more advanced features, including multi column outlines. For those of you who are using Omni Outliner on an iPad, I'll show you how you can share data between the Mac and iPad apps using a technology called Omnipresence. A quick word about outlines before we go on. Outlines allow you to assemble lists of unorganized information into a logical structure with varying levels of detail. Outlines can be very useful for everything from planning a family vacation to capturing and organizing details of a complex project at work. In fact, this screencast started out as an outline that I'll be referencing as I record this material. To begin with, we'll go to the Omni Group's website, which is at omnigroup.com, and I'll click on the Omni Outliner button to be taken to the main page for the Omni Outliner apps. Omni Outliner is available both through the Mac App Store and from the Omni Group directly. One note, before you install the software, you'll need to make sure you have at least Mac OS 10.9 Mavericks installed, because Omni Outliner won't work with earlier versions of the Mac OS. I'll go ahead and download Omni Outliner directly from the Omni Group's website by clicking the Download Pro Standard button. If you don't already have Omni Outliner installed and licensed, this will give you an opportunity to try out the software for 14 days. And at that point, you can choose to either purchase the software directly from the Omni Group, or to purchase it from the Mac App Store. Now, it looks like the software is downloaded. I'm going to go up to the Download Manager, and I'll choose the Omni Outliner disk image. Agree to the license agreement. And then install Omni Outliner by dragging the app into the Applications folder. The first time you launch Omni Outliner, a document called Welcome will load automatically. This gives you some more information on what's new in Omni Outliner 4, what's included in the Pro version that's not available in the Standard version, and some useful resources for getting some additional help on using Omni Outliner. If you want to see more information on what's new in Omni Outliner 4, click on the Disclosure Triangle to the left of What's New, and this will reveal those details. If you want to hide the details, you can collapse this view by clicking the Disclosure Triangle again. Similarly, if you want to see what the differences are between the standard version and the pro versions of Omni Outliner, you can click on this disclosure triangle and then click it again to, to hide that information. We'll be focusing mainly on the standard features of Omni Outliner, but I will touch on some of the pro features in part two. If you're currently evaluating the software and just want to evaluate the standard features, you can go up to the Omni Outliner menu choose Free Trial Mode, and then say Try Standard Edition. And this will just turn off all of the Pro features. So I'm going to go ahead and close down the Welcome document. If you do ever want to get it back, you can go up to the Help menu, and then choose Welcome. Now let's create our first outline. I'll go to the File menu and choose New. And by default, I'll see a list of all the templates that come pre-installed with Omni Outliner. And it can be useful to browse through these templates just to get some ideas on how you might use Omni Outliner in the future. Over on the left sidebar, I can also get to a list of recent documents. So for now, we're just going to go with the, the blank template. We'll just start from scratch. I'll choose the template and then click New Document. So here's our new Omni Outliner document. And before we add any content, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the user interface. If you've used Omni Outliner before, you'll find it looks quite different, and there's some very nice refinements. The Omni Group have done a great job of modernizing the user interface. Let's start by looking at the sidebar. The contents box is currently empty, but you'll notice as we start to add content that a mini outline will be created here automatically. This can be very useful, especially for large, complex outlines, 
as it makes it very convenient to jump to a specific place in the outline. There's also a search box, so if you click on the magnifying glass, you can type in some text and it'll find occurrences of that text within your outline. I'll just click Done for now. The bottom portion of the sidebar is all about styling the document, specifying things like fonts and colors and spacing. We'll be going into this in detail in a moment. If you're focused on creating content, you can hide the style options temporarily by clicking on the down arrow. And then to get them back, just click on the up arrow. Now let's take a look at the toolbar. So the first button allows me to hide and reveal the sidebar. To the right is one that allows me to change the theme of the document. And you could use one of the themes that comes with Omni Outliner, or you could create your own themes. I'm just going to cancel that for now. To the right of that is a zoom control. This is one of my favorite new features in Omni Outliner 4. So it allows you to change the zoom level of the document without actually having to change any of the fonts. So if you click on that, you can make it smaller, see more on screen, or you can make it quite, quite large as well. Over to the right, there's a microphone icon, and uh, if you click on that, it'll actually start to do a voice recording. So you can insert a voice recording right into your outline. Over to the right of that is a button that allows you to add a column to your outline, and we'll be looking at columns in more detail in part two. And then finally, the I button allows you to show the inspector, and if you click it again, it'll hide the inspector. And we'll be looking at the inspector in more detail in just a moment. Now let's start adding some content. To give a specific scenario to work with, let's say you're getting ready to launch a new company and you need a website to showcase your services. You maybe have a lot of ideas of what information needs to be included on the website, but it might not be very clear how to organize it. So one simple way to start out would be just to kind of do a brain dump, start to, to uh, type in the various information that needs to be included in the website without worrying too much about how it's going to be organized and so forth. So let's say, so we probably want, we definitely want to have a, a blog on our website. We're going to want to have an about, about us uh, section of some sort. Uh, we want people to be able to get in touch with us. So we're going to add a, um, a contact section. Uh, we we'll definitely want to include some information on the services we provide. Uh, and those services, let's say they include uh, graphics design and technical services technical services. And then um, let's see what else. We probably want some information on our team members. Let's say there's um, three of us in the team. There's uh, Mary, John, and Charles. So we'll want some sort of a bio for each member in the team. And it just popped into my mind that uh, it'd be great to have a contact form on the website. And maybe a map as well, just showing the company location. So now we have a list of some of the things that we want to include on our website. And sometimes you may just use Omni Outliner to create lists. Maybe there's a packing list uh, for a trip. Maybe there's a checklist of things you need to take care of in your home before you leave on vacation. But in this case, we'll probably have quite a few items and it makes sense to group them together logically so we can kind of see how things are arranged, start to come up with a site map and also be able to just focus in on one area so we're not overwhelmed trying to work on the whole site all at once. So I'm looking at this list and I see some things that can logically be grouped together. So we've got a contact section, which is a pretty general classification. And we also have some more specific things on the list, including the contact form and a map showing the company location. So what I'm going to do is click and drag on the bullet to the left of the contact form. And then I'm going to drag this item right on top of contact. And you'll notice the disclosure triangle appears. And if I click on that, I see contact form as a second level item with the contact as what's called the parent item. And I'm going to do the same thing with the map. So I'll click and drag on the bullet, drop it on top of contact. And now I've got two child items under that parent item of contact. And similarly, these three bio items logically seem to belong under About Us. So what I'm going to do is click on the first one. Then I'm going to hold down the Shift key and click on the third one. And then all at once, I can just grab one of the bullets here and then drop it up to About Us. 
And you'll see I've created a second level under About Us. That's more specific. It shows the bios for Mary, John, and Charles. I notice the two items under Services are both specific services that belong in the Services section. So I can indent these items by selecting the item and pressing the Tab key. And you'll notice Graphics Design is created as a child item of Services, the parent item. I'll do the same thing for Technical Services. I'll select the item and press the Tab key to indent. Now I can easily add another child item to Services by pressing the Return or Enter key. And I'll add Consulting Services. Then it just popped into my mind that I haven't added the, the home page of the website. I want to make sure that I'm tracking that through my outline. So I can press return and I'll type home. And I don't want this to be a child of services. I want this to be at level one. So I can take it up a level by pressing shift and tab together. And you'll see that creates it as a level one heading. At this point, I might want to fine tune my outline a bit, maybe start to reorder the items. Let's take home. I'm going to grab the bullet and move it right up to the top. I'm also going to put blog after about us. And then I'm going to grab the disclosure triangle and move contact right to the bottom. And you'll see it brings all three rows together. I might also want to add some detail to some of these sections. For instance, blog, I don't have any additional information at this point. So I'm going to add some child items. I'll press the return key and then press tab to indent to create my first child item. And let's add a few categories to the blog. Let's say we have announcements, uh, tips and tricks, and we'll have a third one, industry news. And I might also want to add some more detail to the services we provide. So let's go down to graphics design. I'm going to press the return key. Then press child to create a new child of graphics design. And let's say we do um, logo design and website concepts. So now I've got three levels. I've got services at the top level at level one. Graphics design is an example of a level two row. And then logo design and website concepts are at level three. And you might have noticed that the contents area in the sidebar has been automatically updating as I make additions and changes to my outline. This can be very useful if I want to focus on a specific area of the outline. So if I click on services, for instance, then I'm just seeing the services portion of the outline. I could even drill deeper. I could click the reveal arrow beside services and just focus entirely on graphics design. So I'm not looking at the, the full outline, which can get quite complex over time. I'm just focused in on that one area. At any point, I could go back to looking at the full outline by clicking on Contents. If I just wanted to see the top level items, I can go up to the View menu and choose Collapse All. And then I can just expand the sections that I'm interested in. Or if I want to have everything expanded, I can go back to View and choose Expand All. And now I'm seeing all of the levels, all of the elements within my outline. Omni Outliner also allows you to add a note to any item on the outline. You can do this by hovering over the item and then clicking on the Expand Note icon. And then I'm just going to paste in some text. And you'll see as soon as I add the text, this icon becomes dark. So it's indicating that this specific item has a note associated with it. If I want to hide the note, I'll just click on this icon and the note is hidden. I'm not restricted to just storing text within Omni Outliner. For example, I could add an audio recording. So if I go up to Contact Form, I'm going to click the Expand Note to reveal the note field. And then I'll click the microphone and to start recording the audio recording. When I'm done, I'll click the microphone again and you'll see the audio clip gets inserted right into the notes field. Make sure that both the email and the phone number are required fields. So there's my audio clip. I can play it back. Make sure that both the email and the phone number are required fields. And this is embedded within the Omni Outliner document. Another example is I might have some text in an external file. Maybe it's Mary's bio. And I want to actually include that file within my Omni Outliner document. So one way to do that is to, again, reveal the note field by clicking on the Expand Note icon. 
Then I've got the file stored on my desktop. It's a text edit document. Then I'm going to drop that uh, right into the notes field. And this file actually gets physically copied into the Omni Outliner document. So if you were to give your Omni Outliner document to someone else, they'll be able to open up this file, even make changes to it. Now that we have our basic outline in place, we're going to look at how to customize the document, how to apply styles. Before I do that, I'm going to save the document. I'll press Command S and we'll call this website. This has been a shortened version of the full tutorial. And if you'd like to learn more about Omni Outliner 4, we'd like to send you the full version of this tutorial completely for free. All you need to do is just head over to screencastonline.com slash free OO before the end of April 2014 and claim your free tutorial. Now, as an extra special bonus, we'll also send you part two, covering some of the more advanced aspects of Omni Outliner 4 as soon as it's available. So just visit screencastonline.com slash free OO before the end of April to claim your free Omni Outliner 4 tutorials.